G'day, Peter again, and this video is about timing. Look, timing is the one thing, whenever we do a, a live event, I always say if there's one thing you take away from tonight's event, is timing. Because uh, timing is cr critical. Look, it's, it's one thing that a lot of people don't talk much about because they think you just buy a property and it makes money. And over time, it certainly can. But when you have a, uh, a limited time to make your money, if you are uh, here today and you're 55 years old and you want to stop work at 65 years, you've got 10 years to make your money. Haven't you? That's all you've got, your 10 years. And if you've got 200K in your super now and you, and you need 1.2 million to be able to retire, which is not even enough, uh, when the government's saying you need around 60 thousand a year to live on um, and if you stop work at 65 and live to 85 average age of Australia is around 83 um, so it's almost say 20 years for easy maths times 60,000 well that's 1.2 million so and if you want to stop work at 60 well obviously that's more and if you live longer than 83 which hopefully you do then you need even more money you don't you don't want to outlive your money so it's critical you make as much money as you possibly can you can't afford to waste time in the market so you need to make sure you buy the right time of the cycle. So a property cycle, if I draw a property clock for you, 12 o'clock is the top of the cycle, and six o'clock is the bottom of the cycle, which will be down here. And nine o'clock is about halfway up the cycle. Nine o'clock and then three o'clock is down here at the bottom of the, uh, at, sorry, as halfway down the correcting side of the cycle. Okay, so most people are buying properties here. Why? They get sold on hype, they watch the media, their friends are doing very well. Basically, they want social proof that it's the right time to buy in a location. But when they buy in that location, over the next five years, because most cycles run for three to five years, you know, so in that next five years, they've had, they might, hey, might get some growth, and they can sell it right there if they really want to, but they, time they, in that short term, time frame, with your buying costs and getting into, the, getting into the market, probably you could make money, you could sell, but you could pay a couple of gains tax, it's a whole lot of work for a short period of time. But over that five years, you've just gone absolutely nowhere and wasted five years of your life. And if you've got 10 years to make money, and you're now here and you're now zero extra, you're still, you're still you're okay, you might have had another, you might have 250 or something now in your, in your super fund, but you've got nothing here from the property. You have, you've had tax benefits for sure, and uh, maybe some good cash flow depending on what you bought, and that's also very important. Um, this is not about that, it's about capital growth and, and getting that, which is a big, big money maker. Obviously with NDIS, uh, there, um, and still housing, you can get a lot more returns as well through the cash flow. But the importance of timing is this is a big waste of five years of your life. You've got nowhere on that one property. Where if you buy at the start of a growth cycle, especially in that sort of time frame here, where it's just up at about 6.30, around to about 8.30, this is sort of the prime time to be buying around here to around here somewhere. Up to nine o'clock's okay. But if you get in that market there, where the market has started to move, so there is signs of growth, which, and, and things do we, we look for at that time here. We, we, we'll, we'll go in places where we know it's hadn't done nothing for a bunch of years, but we know because of that, the government's spending billions of dollars of infrastructure, private companies are putting billions of dollars of inf infrastructure in, um, you know, that's creating jobs, so uh, jobs, the job market is, is improving, so unemployment's coming down. Uh, that, therefore, that, that's putting pressure on the housing market, so rental incomes are starting to increase. Uh, houses on the market uh, for sale and rent become shorter time frames. You know, all the, right, all the right indicators are working for us to tell us that the timing in the cycle here is starting to turn. And then when we see a sign of, a sign of some growth happening, well, right, it looks like we're at the right time with that growth cycle. And sure, that first that first maybe year might be a, a might have slow growth, but you've you're in the market. You won't buy. You never pay. You never pay any less than what you, you just paid for. So you're on the way for capital growth. So again, my drawings are pretty bad. I must admit. But if you buy that house, uh, then your first house. 
So that's that's going to be year start the actual year one is going to be here for you, and then, then the cycle will start, then your then your 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 cycle of buying will start. So, but then you've got capital growth over the next maybe two years. You might be able to duplicate and buy your second property. So you've now transferred some equity into this property to buy your next property. And then maybe even in the before the five years is up, you might even be able to get your second or third property. Now you've got your third property, if that's the case, you've now got three compounding capital growth assets. That's growth on growth on growth. If that grew at eight, a 10% for your mass over that five year period, you pay, you know, uh, uh, say so $700,000, all of a sudden it's 700,000 becomes 770, 770 becomes like 850, 850 becomes like nine, nine, uh, 940 roughly, and then all of a sudden you, you can get it. All of a sudden you've, you'll get compound capital growth with that property, maybe two or $300,000. And then your, your second property is less time in the market, but it may have grown by $100,000. So you now got you know, $400,000, and then, you, then you've bought your fifth one. It, it may not have grown much, but you're in the market now for that fifth property, it starts. But all these ones, this one, this property here could be in, uh, could be in Perth, hypothetically. You buy this property to start with another cycle, and that might be in uh, Adelaide, and this one would be another start, start of another cycle. Might be in Melbourne, hypothetically. You've got a diversified portfolio, you bought at different times, now you've got three properties working for you. The time you get to this point in time, like like this 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 poor investor, um, that have got they've gone nowhere financially, zero. This person may be worth a few hundred thousand dollars and have three growth assets with strong tax deductions and good great cash flow from three properties. And you see how much further they have gone. They've got they've got now got three properties. In that in that growth period, and they've now got. If they do nothing else, they've got another another you know ten years for this one, maybe eight for this one, and maybe you know seven for this one to grow until they want to stop work. Then it gives them options to what they can do when it comes to having assets at the when they reach that age point. That's not that, that's not what this video is about. But you can see the importance of you know getting into the growth into the growth cycle at the right time duplicating and building a portfolio. If you even if you just buy one and do nothing else, and, but you've now, and you're gonna stop working 15, you're, you're 50 years old, you wanna stop working 65, you've now got, you've got compound capital growth. Yes, it's gonna have a correct, and have some correction, and it'll do not do much for a few years, then it'll grow again, then it'll do the same, it'll go slow again, but then it'll do, you could do it again. So you've got, you got 15 years of, of compounding capital growth, the longest period of time for your, your property to gain the highest amounts of return for you. So you can see the massive difference between doing something to, to doing nothing or doing it poorly to start with, okay? So by the wrong time of a growth cycle is certainly a mistake uh, that most people make when they buy an investment property, which I, I should probably half on more about this. I did mention it um, in, the, uh, in the mistakes in the previous videos, but Timing is, is a critical thing that you must get right. Um, and uh, we've been doing very well uh, for the past 10 years. So uh, I, I do, I, look, I admit the first couple of years we invested, uh, we recommended some investments. Uh, the clients did buy a bit further up the cycle because you know, was, that was really an a, a, a eye opener for us that we, that we were too late in the cycle itself. We thought it was the right time for the information we were reading, but then we realised that you have to go behind behind the, what you're reading to find some real facts, and then realise that you must get in earlier. I mean, those clients you know, would have all done well by now, but there's no doubt they weren't. As, they haven't done as well as the people invested after those years. I mean, in the second year, probably the second year of our coming to the third year of our business, when we really started promoting, um, you know, that was uh, you know, in that Sydney market. Uh, was a great great location, and then then, then moved into in, in Melbourne as well at that time as well. So, yeah, all good times. So, but yeah, right time growth cycle very important. You must get that right. I hope you found that useful. Great tool to show your clients so they understand timing. Do a very basic drawing. You can do it uh, if you have got uh, you know um, you can do it sharing the, your screen um, on a Zoom call. You can you can get an account with Webinar Jam. Um, and on Webinar Jam, there's a um, 
uh, a whiteboard function you can use as well to draw things. Uh, there's ways, there's obviously a lot of online options you can go with to show people online, because you're not all, obviously not all, you know, don't all have a, uh, a meeting room with a big whiteboard. Um, when I, when I um, ever go face to face with somebody um, in, a, in a different location, I'll take an A3 um, bit of paper and I'll draw it on that for them along with a bunch of other scribbles that I do as well with my little drawings I like doing. But you know, visuals are always good to help people identify you know, what you're trying to get across to them. Hope you found that helpful. Till next time, uh, Peter, PBA, as always, trying to keep it real.